up where we left off last time um, and look at, uh, this is sort of our, these few lessons and labs, you know, think of them as being sort of your CSS playground, all right? Uh, CSS Zen Garden is already taken, so we're going to have to come up with a CSS playground. It's an opportunity for you to experiment with uh, different things in CSS. Um, our primary focus is going to be on getting the layout of the page the way we want it to. Because the first few, uh, you know, the first several weeks of this uh, semester, even when we started with, a, or with a CSS, all of our layouts were the basic flow layout, where it was one thing after another. All right? <clears throat> And now we're starting to use different techniques to lay out the page. So we'll, we'll cover a few of them, talk a little bit about the limitations of, of each of them, and we'll show examples of just different ways to do different things. And like I said before, you know, consider these tools in, in your tool belt. You know, if the situation calls for it, if you have a very specific layout that you want to look a certain way, then the fixed layout might be a good example. Now, one thing that we observed is it doesn't necessarily look good on mobile sites. Well, um, after we finish these series of lectures, which probably will be sometime next week, we'll look at what you can do for mobile sites. All right? Because you can actually have a website that applies a couple different style sheets depending on whether it's a mobile device or a desktop that's viewing, uh, that's viewing uh, the page. So... Uh, a fixed layout doesn't really change when the window changes. So let's go to cssengarden.com for a second and let's look at some of these and we'll compare some of the some of the sites, some of the, the pages. You said it doesn't change when the layout changes? It doesn't change when the when like the screen size changes. Okay. So if we look at this one look at the main page, this one I would say is very is similar in a lot of respects to the first layout we did, the first version of the prototype. And there's some flexibility here, because notice how things go the width of the page, but notice that as I resize the window, the stuff resizes itself. So if we go and look at how this looks on a mobile device, which we can in Google Chrome, I can pick how it would look on a Nexus 6. It doesn't look bad, even on a mobile phone. Let's look at some of the other designs. Notice how, as this one gets smaller, it doesn't resize. Now, is that good or bad? Well, it's less flexible. So, if you have a window, if you have a giant monitor, this would take up only a little bit of space on it. All right? If you view this on a mobile device... Like this is how it would look on a Nexus 6P. So that isn't particularly good, right? Now, you can apply a second style sheet to it to make it look better on a mobile device. And again, we'll talk about that sometime next week. But the idea here is this person wanted to show this specific layout. They, there's a very specific layout they wanted to have in mind, they had in mind, and they wanted it to look this way. So therefore, using fixed was appropriate for this. So don't think of one technique or another as being better than, uh, uh, better than the other. Each technique uh, is its own, uh, has its own strengths and weaknesses, and you use it when the situation calls for it. Um, let's look at the prototypes that we had uh, developed. One we completed, one we um, started to develop last time.
here's the one we did last time. Or we finished last time, or the time before maybe. I don't remember. And notice how this is almost halfway between the two. It's flexible up to a point, and then it becomes fixed. Sometimes web pages that are completely flexible are called liquid layouts. I've heard that term used. And sometimes websites that are not flexible at all are called ice layouts. They're frozen in place. And then sometimes when it's in between, they're jokingly called jello layouts. You know, how jello moves a little bit, but it doesn't move as much as liquid does, but it's it's more flexible than like something that's frozen solid would be. All right. Let's look at the second layout, which we didn't quite finish. And the second layout, we could still tweak this a little bit. Again, it's kind of flexible up to a point, but a big part of it is fixed. In fact, I want to make it completely fixed just to demonstrate that. Um, I will make the width, again, instead of 80%, I'll maybe make the width 800 pixels. Any place that you have a width, you can specify either a certain number of pixels, which is rigid, all right, or you can specify a percentage. And the percentage uh, is a percentage of the available space. So if you had a paragraph inside a section, and the section was defined as 400 pixels wide, and you said the paragraph was 50 percent, it would be 50 percent of that 400 pixels, so it would be 200 pixels wide. So let's do this. And let's see what we have here. Make a totally inflexible layout. showing me my CSS. I know exactly what I did because students do this all the time. I clicked at it inside the zip file, I think. If you can't open something inside the zip file. Or maybe not. Let me see. Okay. No, that was an issue with the version of the version that we were using of Internet Explorer. We'll talk about browser compatibility issues later on as well. So this is pretty much the way that I would want it to be. Um, let's trim a little bit off of the home, the, the section. We make the section. 480 pixels. All right. And there we have this. Okay. So not flexible. But if I had a specific layout that I would want to guarantee, this would get the job done. Let's go and make some of the other improvements to this. Um, we can go and we can, one thing that, that I always see is like, I always take as a sign that someone really looked at it and took care of it, is to add some padding in there. Because it doesn't look good when the text runs right up against the border. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add padding to each of these. And I'm going to say padding... 10 pixels, and I'll add that to each of the different main sections of the page. See how much better that looks when it doesn't go but right up against there. 
Um, I am going to, I do need to drop those down a little bit now. So I'll drop down the section and the nav. Um, I can change the font. I'm going to put the font on the fa on the body so that every place gets the font. So I'm going to say font family, and I'll put some fonts here. Um, Georgia. Serif. So if, it, if, if George is available, we'll use that font. Otherwise, we'll uh, use a serif font. Okay, so that's how that looks. I'm going to drop the footer down a little bit too. Alright, let's drop it down a little bit more. that we had before. Oh, it's already there. And I will say under header, instead of background white, I will say background space URL. Tetris.jpg. Alright. Hmm. Now it makes it kind of hard to read. I guess I could make the color of the text white. it up. This is why we should have a backup of the image before we do it. Um, fortunately, I do have a backup of it in prototype 1. So I'll copy that. Paste it in here. again. And
can fade the color a little bit uh, and get what we want. All right, fade the color of that or put like a transparent background behind it or any number of the techniques that we um, talked about. So you do that until it was the way that you wanted it and, and made changes. I'm not going to, um, let, let's go in and edit that image a little bit. Isn't it funny? It's like I feel like I'm a little bit of a perfectionist even when it's just a, a simple example like this. But I'll go in here and I can't find anything now that they've changed this. View in mixed reality. What? try this tool. We'll try adjust and we'll make it lighter. I think. Yeah. And we'll fade the colors a little bit. Actually did absolutely nothing for the readability of it. Oh wow. Yes. Are we able to put a black outline over the text? So it's like white in the middle with a black outline. Well, that's a good question. Let's see. Um, CSS outline letters. Adding stroke to web text. Let's try this. did it. it. I'm not sure if that's any better, but um, we can make it bigger, the font bigger. So yeah, we can we can do that. Um, anytime you see WebKit in front of a CSS uh, thing, it means that it will only work on certain browsers, which gives you a little bit of a risk, possibly. Um, one thing that I think is important as a web developer is to realize that you will not necessarily get things looking identical across all browsers. That bothered a lot of 
early graphic designers that were into web design because they were used to doing magazine layouts, right? And with a magazine layout, you have a lot of control, right? If you buy Time Magazine, and I buy Time Magazine, it's the exact same size, right? It's not like you get like a gigantic version of Time Magazine and I get a tiny version of one. Yet in web pages, you don't have that luxury. You don't know how the person is going to be viewing it. So because of that, you sort of lose a bit of control over precisely how it's going to look across different platforms. All right. The next thing we're going to do, next kind of layout that we're going to do, is what's called relative layout. And again, this has its purpose too. This is going to achieve a similar sort of layout as this one um, in a slightly different way. I'm going to copy prototype 2. Actually, I'm going to copy prototype 1 because I like that one better. I'm going to edit my CSS. And I'm going to get, well, I'm going to get rid of some things. Um, no, I'm not going to get rid of anything just, just yet. I'm going to change some things, though. I'm going to want to achieve the same layout as this, but I'm going to do it in a little bit. Okay, again. I'm going to want to try to achieve the same layout as this, but with a slightly different technique. So the first thing I'm going to do in this CSS is I'm going to make my navigation, instead of being 600 pixels, I'm going to make it be 200 pixels. And my section, instead of being 600 pixels, I'm going to make 400 pixels. I'm then going to change it so that the links are stacked vertically instead of horizontally. That will involve getting rid of these. Well, that will actually involve getting rid of this, the display inline block. So let me save all that, and then I'll view this page. It's the wrong one. And you notice that well, there's a little bit of a problem with this. These things are stacked. Yeah, oh, 20 instead of 200. Yeah, there we go. So it should be 200. All right. But these things are stacked vertically on top of each other. All right. Which makes sense. These are using the flow layout. Remember, with the flow layout, it puts it puts block elements stacked one on top of each other. They just flow down the page. What we're going to do now is we're going to use what's called relative layout. Remember before we used, we used um, absolute layout. And absolute layout says we're going to put this at that position of the page and it's going to stay there. And when you scroll it, it's going to scroll off the page. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say I want this nudged over 200 pixels. I want the browser to put it where it was going to put it, except put it over 200 pixels to the left. So I'm going to go into CSS for the nav and say position relative and not absolute. Relative means browser figure out where you're going to put it and then make these adjustments. So the left, I'm going to adjust negative 200 pixels. And boom, that puts it in that place. All right. So, how are we going to get this one over? We're going to put it to the left. We're going to push it 
to the right or from the left, uh, maybe 100 pixels, and we're going to push it up 200 pixels. So I'm going to go and say, all right, for the section, put where you're going to put it, but give it a layout position of relative. And push it, let's say, 200 pixels to the left. And top, we're going to go up, so we're going to use a negative number. So top, we want it to go up, so we're going to say up 200 pixels. All right, so I sort of misestimated. It doesn't need to be quite that high, so we'll change it to 150 and 150. Let's see what that gives us. All right. It's pretty much where we want it to be. Um, let's try 130. Now, the last thing we need to do is lift this guy up. So we'll lift up the footer, um, position relative. Let's make these 
buttons look rounded. All right. How are we going to do that? Well, I don't know. All right. I don't make buttons rounded too often. I know you can do it. Why do I know that you can do it? Well, I've seen rounded things. I've seen rounded borders on the web. All right. And I did it one time. <laughs> you know, I remember doing it. But I don't remember the exact syntax. And that's fine. You're not going to have these things memorized. You're not going to have every CSS rule memorized. Just know what CSS is responsible for. CSS is responsible for every aspect of the appearance of the site. And therefore, if the question is, how do I make the buttons rounded? Know that that's a CSS question. Know that that's a CSS question. So I'm going to Google CSS round borders. I'm also going to make that section a little less wide. Let's maybe make it 360.
maybe that's not supported in this browser either. So forget that. You're supposed to be able to do that. How do you know what is supported in browsers and what's not supported in browsers? Well, you can try it, all right, and see if it works. It's important to test your page across many browsers to begin with, all right, because you don't know what the person on the other end has. There's also a convenient website, Can I Use, that you can click on and you can look for any feature in CSS or whatever. So, what this shows you is that almost no browsers support that initial letter property. All right? So, Safari does. If we had the Safari browser, that would work on this machine. Of course, we don't because it's not a Mac. Does that mean you don't use some of these things? No, because look what happened when it didn't support it. It just ignored it. It's a nice thing about the way HTML and CSS works. If you use a feature that is not supported in a particular browser, it just ignores it. All right? No harm. No harm, no foul. All right? So you can always take advantage of these features or try to. It will look great on the platforms on which it's supported, and it will at least not look bad on platforms where it's not supported. But this Can I Use site is a good example of uh, is is a good example. Now this first letter is a different way to do it. first letter of an element. So, ah, there we got it. So it's a nice little touch that you can put on your page if, if you want to. I'm not expecting you to use like this on necessarily a lab. Why did I bring this up? I bring this up to show you that almost anything you can think of regarding appearance, especially like if you think of things that you've seen like in magazines for layout or, or um, you know, uh, or for typography, the way the print is, that you can go and you can you can do that um, using um, CSS. All right, I want to get to one more um, version of this prototype. And again, I'm going to copy the first prototype because I like that one the best. One thing that's kind of cool is if you can keep the navigation in place even as you scroll. If we look at this example, notice that as we scroll the page, the navigation moves. And it potentially can move off the page depending on how big our window is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that the navigation doesn't move. And that is done with position fixed. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is 
So I'm going to go into CSS for this. I'm going to get rid of the margin for the navigation. I'm going to make it so the navigation is vertical. I'm going to make the navigation 200 pixels wide. And I'm going to say position oops, fixed top 10px left 10px. So now if I look at this page, Alright, the navigation's here, and even as we scroll, the navigation stays fixed. Now, a problem with this is, right now, the way that I have the margin set on those guys, I'm getting overlap. So I'm going to put, I'm going to change the margins a little bit so that I don't get that overlap. And I'm going to say margin fifty PX ten PX. Let's see what that does for us. Actually, let's make that not 10 px. Let's make it 260 px. Because the the nav is 200 width. This will be. I'll make the the position of all these um, have a margin of 260. So it will push it out of the way. So the key thing to remember with this is fixed doesn't move even when you scroll, whereas absolute scrolls along with the window. So now we have this, the page look like this, and as we scroll, the navigation doesn't move. Yes? Is there a way to make it so like when you're scrolling the background doesn't move? So like is there a way to make it... Um, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure. It, is there a way? I can almost guarantee the answer to that question is yes. All right? You know, to quote something people in my generation said all the time, we can put a man on the moon. We can do this. Right? So if we can put a man on the moon, we can make the background not scroll. Now, I'm just not sure if there's something simple that we can do in CSS or if we'd have to write something more involved in JavaScript to do that. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know how to do that. You know, you could do a quick Googling and, and find out. Now, one thing I did want to show is something that's called uh, the way that margins work. All right? If you notice, I slipped in for each of these a 50-pixel margin on the top. Now, if you look, you have to trust me on this. There's 50 pixels here, because I said 50 pixels from the top. I said 50 pixels from the bottom also, and 50 pixels from the top. So notice that even though there's a 50 pixel margin on the bottom and a 50 pixel margin on the top, the margins don't add up. All right? And you might think that's weird, but that's actually kind of the way that you want it to work. When you say you want the margin to be 50 pixels, you're saying, I want to make sure there's at least 50 pixels between this guy and the neighbor below it. That's what it means when you specify a bottom margin. 
When you specify a top margin of this guy of 50 pixels, you're saying, I want to make sure there's space of at least 50 pixels between this guy and the guy above it. Well, 50 pixels accomplishes both of that. There's no need to add them up and come up with 100. So the margins sort of collapse to be uh, essentially, if you have like a top margin and a bottom margin of two successive elements, the margin that you're going to get is going to be the bigger of the two numbers. And if they're equal, that's the margin that you're going to get. So if I said 60 and 40, I'd get 60 pixels as the margin. If I said 40 and 40, I'll get 40. All right? So I, there's really no reason to put a margin here. In fact, 50 is probably too much. I'm going to change it to be um, 10 pixels on the top and bottom because I remember I gave two numbers. For this one, 10 pixels top and bottom. This one, 10 pixels top and bottom. So, yeah, that looks a little better. All right. But notice that it's 10 pixels and not 20 pixels. It doesn't add it up. I actually like the navigation not moving. So I think this is a neat effect. Because no matter where I scroll on the page, we'll have to pretend this is bigger, but as I scroll, I keep that navigation constant. All right? The navigation is like, how do I want to say? The navigation is like the, 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 you know, the, the safe place for users on your site. You know, if there's some place where they don't want to be, you know, that allows them to go somewhere else. So keeping it visible all the time is not a bad idea. All right. It's not the only way that you can do it, but again, it's a pretty neat thing that you can do. All right. Um, that's all I had for today. We'll go over a couple more versions of layout so that you have all these different tools in your layout uh, tool belt. All right. So that you can do a lot of great things and make your own little CSS playground uh, for your assignments and project. All right. I will go unlock the lab. Then I'm going to come back here to get my files. Then I'll be back.